Hi guys, so this is a follow-up video to my previous video entitled $1 USB Rubber Ducky. In that video I did a review of it, though in this video I'm going to do a tutorial and show you how you can get it set up and working as a proper USB Rubber Ducky. So firstly you're going to want to make sure that you have the Arduino IDE installed. I've got mine here, link will be in the description if you don't already have it. Secondly we're going to need to download some drivers, so this link will also be in the description. And you're going to want to scroll down and download digistump.drivers.zip. Okay, I'll save that, open, and I'll save that to my desktop. Okay, next in this folder, you're going to have to install dpinst64. Next, great. So make sure each driver has got a tick next to it. If it doesn't, just run it again and you should be okay with that. Okay, so next you can close all that previous stuff and open your Arduino IDE. We're gonna to want to go to File, Preferences, and then where it says additional board manager URLs, you're going to want to copy and paste the, or the URL I've linked in the description below and press OK. Okay, so next you're going to want to go to tools and board and then go to boards manager. Okay, just give it a second to load. And then where it says type, you're going to want to click the box and select contributed. Okay, now we're going to want to select Digistump AVR boards by Digistump and press install. Okay, so that's going to take a few minutes or a few seconds, depending. So once it's installed, you can close that previous window and we're going to want to go to tools, board, and then select Digispark default 16.5 megahertz. And then we want to go to file, examples, and then right down the bottom where, where you see all the Digispark options, you're going to want to go to Digispark Keyboard and then Keyboard. Okay, cool. Next, you're going to need to go to Tools and Programmer and change it to USB Tiny ISP. Or rather, it doesn't say that in any of the guides I've been looking at, but it only works for me when I select that. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so next you're going to need to, don't plug in your Digispark at this point, just press Upload. Okay, it should compile fine. And then it'll say plug in device now. So I will plug in my Digispark. Okay. And you might get some drivers installing, but that's completely normal. Okay, so I'll just press okay. And you can see in the bottom, it will say uh, starting to upload, starting to use app, and then micronucleus done. Thank you. So now it's completely done essentially. So if I were to put my uh, cursor in here, and then it will just type hello Digispark every five seconds, I do think. Yeah, five seconds, because there's a five second delay. So now it's pretty much all working. We just need to figure out how to program it. So let's get to that. So it's really not hard to write your own scripts. However, I'm going to explain the simple scripts I've written, which is going to simply open a command prompt. And after that, it should be pretty self-explanatory on how you should write your own scripts. So firstly, uh, the Digi Keyboard's test script, um, or rather example script, puts in a send keystrick zero. Um, it says it works, makes it work with older uh, computers, but whatever, I just left it in. Uh, the next thing I've done is set a delay of 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds using digikeyboard.delay5000. After that, I've pressed the Windows key, which is what this line does, the left Windows key, uh, digikeyboard.send keystrick zero mod GUI left. So, uh, from my testing, it doesn't work if you just put mod GUI left for whatever reason. However, if you put zero comma mod GUI left, it does work. So I'm not too sure why, but that's how it works. And then after that, I put another delay of one second. And then it simply prints CMD. So it says Windows and prints CMD. So you can use prints to print any string of characters. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so after that, there's another delay of one second, and then we'll ignore this because it's commented out for just a second. And then after that, it sends a keystroke, enter. So um, I'll put this in the description, but you can have a look at the source code for digikeyboard.h, and you can go through it and look at the different keys they use. So if you're just doing, say for example, uh, digikeyboard.print and then CMD, you can just put that in as it is. However, if you want to send keystrokes individually, you're going to have to refer to this document, which is going to list all the different keys that you can use. So it's pretty obvious when you look at this, you can use F keys, spacebar, enter, all the alphanumeric keys, and then some of the special keys. 
So that's that. Okay, so that's just going to wait five seconds. Windows key, wait a second, type command, wait a second, and then press enter. So pretty self-explanatory. But what if you want to press multiple keys down at one time? Like in my previous video, which was a tutorial on how you can retrieve the Windows logon hashes, uh, you need to run a command prompt in administrator mode. So you had to um, press the Windows key and then type CMD and do Control Shift Enter instead of just enter by itself. And then it will bring up this prompt and then we can get that past this by doing left and then enter. So how are you gonna do that? Well, let's see, I'll uncomment this. So instead of doing send keystroke with a single keystroke in it, you're going to want to do send keystroke and then the three keystrokes you're gonna to want to send. So in this case, it's control shift enter. So I've got mod control left, mod shift left and key enter. So the first two are separated by a comma and then the last two are separated by a pipe symbol, which is to the left of Z and you have to hold down shift as well to get the pipe symbol up. And then there's another second delay and then send keystroke key arrow left, which is gonna to go to the left on that um, run administrator mode prompt. And then we're just gonna press enter as usual. So that's how that works. Although if you want to press just two keys at once for whatever reason, I think you just have to, let's see, remove this last bit and put a comma in between it. However, it might be a pipe symbol, I'm not sure, but it's, it's one of those two for sure. So finally, let's check that this script does actually run. So we can do that by going, make well, making sure that we have um, the right board, Digispark default 16.5 megahertz is selected and program at USB tiny ISP. And then we're gonna press upload and then we're gonna wait for the prompt where it's gonna ask us to plug in the Digispark. Okay, plug in the Digispark. So I've plugged in. And now we're just gonna have to wait a few seconds and it says done, thank you. So now we're just gonna wait a few seconds and see if this thing does actually run as planned. CMD, enter, there we go. So it works. You could shave down some of these delays quite a bit. Oh, it's gonna keep on doing it because it's on a, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> I should unplug it. Um, you could shave down these delays quite a bit. However, I just put them as a bit bigger so you can see what's happening. So that's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos.